All right, now that we have a uh, our collection of editable shapes, we can move on to the next step where we can uh, wrap these all up, merge these into a single uh, graphic shape that's actually just one vector object. And that's how we'll uh, be able to create, start to create that masking effect. Now, at this point's a good time to work from a duplicate. We don't wanna lose all this hard work, even if it only took us a minute or so to put together. Um, we Good time to just duplicate what we have here and uh, work from a uh, copy of it. So I could either copy all of these on the same slide or I can just duplicate uh, the slide right here and I'll do that. So I just have two of the same. Go ahead and select all of the uh, shapes So just do a uh, control A or drag a selection around all of them. And in PowerPoint 2013, which is what we're working with here, I can go to the format tab and choose merge shapes. Now, if you're in 2010, you'll have to add this to one of your menu tabs and we have some tutorials on that and I'll go ahead and include a uh, tutorial or at least a link to the tutorials we do. 2013 makes this uh, really easy um, to access. So if you always forget, if you ever forget what each of these does, you can just sort of hover over each of them and you can see um, uh, at least a preview of what it will do. This one is what the union is what we want to work with because it unifies uh, all those shapes into a single graphic, right? So um, if I see this here, and even if I control G to group this, as soon as I click in here again, I can have access and select each of the individual shapes. Well, that's not the case here. I can double click it all I want, but um, it's it's just, it's one, it's really being treated as a single shape. And if I zoom in, you can see that it's still vector. So I, I don't lose any, any quality here. With this selected, I'm gonna go ahead and make the cover, which is really the, the, the way we'll use this character to punch out a hole. So we're actually gonna kind of reverse select the character. So I'm just gonna bring in a rectangle. Now, the, however big you make this is kind of dependent on the, the type of project you're working with. Um, you do not, let me change the color. You do not have to make the rectangle really tight around the character, like so it just shows uh, this kind of captures the uh, the exact outline or bounding box of that. Makes it a little bit harder to work with, but depending on the project, you may have a lot of these close together, and it makes sense to uh, make this initial shape, uh, this base shape, a um, a little bit tighter. I'm going to give myself some room to work with, so I'm going to make it a little bit larger, and just want to kind of call that out uh, that you can you know certainly play with this or think about uh, what your your final design is going to be and, and how large to make all these. Plus, you can always go back and right click, edit the points and you know make this tighter or uh, bigger if you need to. So this will be the masking shape that I put on. I'm gonna put him above, so right click and bring to front and just put him over the middle of the top of it, center it, select both, and from my format tab again, to go merge shapes and not union this time, but combine. And what combine is gonna do is gonna kind of punch a hole where that character was. It takes that character and just sort of knocks out that shape from the bottom uh, rectangle shape. You can see sort of the slide coming through here on the bottom. So this is sort of the basis for creating that effect. Now, white makes it a little bit tough here, so I'm gonna go ahead and just change the background of the slide to a different color. And of course, this is always gonna be editable um, regardless of, of how we want to work. But I just wanted to get away from white just to make it a little bit easier so you see what what we're working with. So with this selected, I'm going to create another shape, which will be the actual color of our character. So bring in another rectangle. And let's say that we wanted him to be white by default. And that's where the white can come in. And I'll move that one to the back. Actually, let me choose a little bit more of an emphasis color here. Okay, so you can see how that uh, color, right, that, that base color now becomes the color fill of our character. Well, what you'd probably wanna do, right, when we get through with this is we would change that mask, this top part that we created, to the actual color of our slide. And now it creates the illusion that that man is the blue that we started with. Well, I guess it was a little bit darker right there, right? So I, if I needed to do that, I can, can make him darker. And all we need now is one more rectangle, right? To 
bring in as the emphasis. So I'm gonna put this cover back on him. I'll leave it a little bit off so you can see that. And then bring in one more. And this will be the way you use, that's the smaller rectangle that we use to just highlight uh, parts of our graphic. And I'll bring this back to the top. Selected the wrong one, so bring that to the bottom. Bring that one to the front. Right, so my, my mask shape is at the top. My initial character fill is on the bottom. And then this emphasis right here is what I can use to add or subtract different percentages based on how I'm setting up my infographic. And I can just duplicate that and then based on your percentages, which we'll set up in the next tutorial to show you how uh, you can kind of easily, quickly gauge the actual amount for each of the graphics. But this makes it a lot easier, so you don't have to uh, go in there and create different graphics with uh, different color shapes or overlays and then save them out. It's really the same graphic each time. You just modify uh, the size or the height of whatever that emphasis graphic is. All right, so in the next tutorial, we'll go ahead and just set up some guidelines as a ways to quickly uh, create the, the specific percentages for um, your emphasis graphic.